Hello and welcome to a new live stream here from the Karchak Studio in Essen, Germany. Hello, hello, hello. Today we are talking about uh, the, all the different categories in magic, uh, which of them are uh, officially used in competitions. We are talking about competitions like World Championships, not only America Got Talent or Penitella Fulas. Certainly these categories are <laughs> awesome as well. <laughs> now we are talking about um, the whole history of all the different categories that exist. And before we start, let's start with that. Hello, hello, hello. Here we are again. Yes, magic is a very, very old art form that exists for hundreds of years and certainly it was uh, at the beginning witchcraft and we until today have to decide if magic is um, seen as white magic or black magic. So if we really have superpowers or whatsoever and uh, well we can confess we definitely only use white magic and what conjuring you. is. <laughs> uh -huh. He's the one. Yeah, he wears a black shirt, but otherwise, um, I would say it's white magic. Um, when we did the first live stream about this topic in German language two hours ago, uh, it was easier to start with. I was discussing with uh, my partner Roger for almost an hour uh, how to translate the first category and the new one because actually these two categories or the first two pages are more yeah. or less the same name, even if it's not. In German we call it Taschenspieler tricks. <laughs> yeah, it means, uh, uh, yeah, whatever, pocket. It, it's really difficult. I mean, we had translations uh, from... Pocket uh, player tricks. Well, in German language, an old ver version of magician uh, is um, Gaukler. What is funny-wise also used until today in the Dutch language as Gochler. Yeah. yeah, Gochela. Gochela. Uh, and uh, in, in, um, <laughs> it, it sounds a little bit, uh, and, and some translations also do, do, uh, turn it into juggler, what, what it is not, because you're not juggling back then. And then we had trickster, what is this not, a jester, something different, etc., etc. But in the end, we are starting with busking, it's a busker. And that is really the first topic we are talking about. Oh, yeah, we should. Don't certainly. forget to subscribe <laughs> us, ring the bell, and don't miss the uh, next right the next live stream because every Monday on at eight o'clock German time, eight o'clock p.m. in the evening our time, we are going live doing our next stream. You can certainly watch this whenever you want, wherever you want. Yeah. So, but anyway, here's the next category, um, and that's busking the in the beginning. Hundreds of years ago, maybe even so 1400, 1500, um, it was used by the merchants at the fairs so that people would gather and uh, you would do tricks and the cups and balls games, etc. to uh, draw attention. And un uh, uh, after that, um, when they have the crowd, they would then sell all different kinds of stuff like snakes, snake oil, and you know it. If you have seen the, the movie Medicus, then you would know. Certainly, yeah. Now this art form uh, was uh, very ancient and um, yeah, it was transformed. It, the Cups and Balls games is still used by so many famous magicians and I'm sure if you're from America you, you must know the Cups and Balls version of, of Penn and Teller doing it with transparent plastic yeah, it's cups. That's so super cool. It's so good and I even have seen a video of, of, of Teller doing a version of um, just for meditation and rehearsing where he does a cups and balls version where nothing happens so he lifts up the ball is there he puts it down ball is whatever but in the meantime he's doing all kinds of magic removing it but for yeah. the spectator nothing has even ever changed so yeah. it's for him different for his thing. own yeah, yeah it's, cool. it's it's fantastic it's cool. so and when you when you look for a good cups and balls routine for a modern cups and balls routine i think uh, Roger, your partner and a good friend. It's not. It's not cups and balls. It's, no, it's it's, 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 a, it's a chop cup. It's a chop cup. Yeah, but it's it's in it's the, a form. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a it's, form of this. And um, go on the website uh, from Kachak and search for the uh, 
Bar Cup. Yeah, the Bar Cup. It's there. The Bar amazing, Cup reloaded. Amazing, amazing, amazing uh, routine from Roger. From Roger. Thank you, Roger, for this amazing effect and this idea. Yes. Now, if you if you take the whole story of the Bar Cup, as we said, it is very ancient. You would find beautiful versions. I mean, a classic one when it was transferred into the 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 parlor magic into the salons of the of the uh, high elite and not just to the fairs, uh, to the normal people. Um, it, the cups and balls was always part of it, and and the master doing this was Di Vernon yeah. as well. And then later on, uh, uh, well, also uh, René Lavant doing his version with only one hand. That yeah. was uh, brilliant. But anyhow, uh, this busking is still under the name of busking. <laughs> That's why I have now the second one. Uh, but I would call it the modern street performance or modern uh, modern uh, street magic. And we are not talking about the street magic that you would uh, know from David Blaine or, or Chris Dynamo Angel, or, yeah. exactly all these guys who perform seemingly on the street. Well, they perform on the street, uh, uh, but but uh, a camera is with them. Yeah, we speak about the the old uh, the old crowd building street magic style. Yes. It's, it's so hard to do, and but you get a lot of experience when you when you go on the street and build a crowd, have fun with the people, it's amazing. Definitely. So yeah. this is uh, uh, as well, it, it, it's busking. And if you, if you uh, live in England, uh, then you definitely have to go to Edinburgh, to the uh, festival there, uh, or even traveling, c come over to Germany. We have uh, uh, street magic festivals here as well. Yeah. And, Bam and Bamberg. Bamberg, but Bam also St. Bamberg, what is in the south of Germany, very beautifully located it's even a it's even a, a, um, a competition of street magicians that are then judged uh, by the uh, by the public but also by uh, a jury who would be the best busker of this weekend so a really uh, nice weekend to spend anyway now <clears throat> street magic is is well it's not only it was street performance let's say you can do really all kinds of um, bubble blowing juggling Everything. Uh, everything. Everything, but one form definitely is uh, street magic and and uh, building a crowd. Gazzo was a great performer. Wow. Cosmo is, is very famous uh, for it as well in the United States. And Jeff McBride is, uh, is poof, I mean, okay, he is, he is, he's doing other stuff as well and he's well known for others. But he is also uh, teaching people doing the busking at festivals, etc. So... You should definitely check out his his um, mystery uh, a school of mystery. School of mystery. Yes, school of mystery. Yes, uh, uh, it's it's awesome. You would you would learn so much there. Anyhow, uh, the next category would be uh, storytelling story magic. magic. Yeah, the category that we forgot in the German live stream. Sorry for that. So for all the guys who are joining us now, who also saw the German one, we are talking about storytelling magic. And storytelling is actually the form that. I did before releasing the Phoenix deck, all the vintage cards, uh, the, the tarot deck, the heirloom deck, gypsy deck, etc. were all um, uh, yeah, tools and, 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 and tricks where a story was told and, and then with the storytelling it's, it's kind of a fairy tale telling that you can also do at a fair with people gathering etc. but then you can add magic to it. And there are two kinds of um, uh, possibilities, like in a pendulum, that on one side you would have the bizarre magic, what well, uh, is pretty dark and and, and good friend of all of, of us is uh, bizarre magic, Sven Hoyvus. Yes, you do a lot of bizarre yes. magic. Yes, if, if you if you would visit him in his in his place, uh, everything looks very bizarre, and, and very Timo, dark. And Timo Kraus also he uh, worked a little bit on bizarre magic. He was awesome. on, he was in a special convention. Um, for Bizarre Magic. Knuck, 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 yeah. yeah. He's, he's also, a yeah. great guy. Yeah. Great guy. And, and really, if you or uh, the Belgium one, um, oof, uh, I yeah. released the effect er, er, with er, the, er, er, no, 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 no. Um, the the er, guy, I, I released the book with, uh, the, the trick with him with... Um, with this book? Oh, uh, in New Orleans. The, uh, okay. Uh, doesn't matter. It's really cool. It's the Curato. The Curato. It's, yes, it's his name. Oh boy, you have to see his book. It's be Christian Schellman. That's his name. He does okay. awesome magic. Now the other swing to the pendulum is something I have never witnessed yet, 
but I know that several of my customers are doing this and this is gospel magic. Okay. We don't have this here in Germany, no. definitely not. Uh, we would not bring magic together in the church or wherever. Um, um, so this is the other swing. I, I wish sooner or later that when I visit again the United States that I would uh, be able to see one of uh, these performances just to know what I'm talking about. Mm. So far I have not witnessed it yet. So um, if someone who is doing gospel magic is seeing this and um, and I come to the United States into his area, please uh, let me know. I would be happy to join you. Next category. Uh, manipulation. Yeah. That's certainly something uh, that you might have seen. Uh, certainly Jeff McBride would be one of those guys. Uh, who else is a great manipulator in, in the modern world where people would, uh, people, non-magicians would, would recognize them? That's a little bit difficult, right? Nowadays it's kind of something only for magicians or at magic conventions where we would see these manipulations. Well, Certainly, uh, some of the acts now at Penn and Teller, when they invite uh, Asian magicians, yeah. they, they would be able to to, do to, to uh, show you a great manipulation act um, as the modern school of magic in uh, Korea, for instance, is very strongly orientated for manipulation. They even have an academy uh, with, with professors, teachers that are... Yeah, you can, you can study uh, yes, magic you can. In, in, in Asia, no? In this uh, academy, in the, yeah, yes. Okay. There were two, the one Maybe. is closed, but one is still there. And, and because the history of, I mean, the Chinese magic history is, is hundreds of years old. Japanese, they have also a very long tradition. But the Korean school was very young, so uh, they did not have to build up on the shoulders of their ancestors but they could start everything new so their magic feels very very modern very new and fresh so that's also very interesting to witness uh, this area and uh, for a certain time the the Koreans I think was it was it before Busan well we had the last uh, world championship in in Korea yeah but before that in Blackpool uh, the Koreans won the most uh, prices in, in the, in the championship because yes. they have also a good community they are close together they're speaking they, yeah, yeah, they yeah, yeah. well practice it's all together in the yeah, but yeah. and it's also young people who really have a lot of time uh, to practice and if you would see their skills you would say it's talent it's just um, yeah much time spent to practice and to get to this level of quality that's exactly. awesome so the next one <clears throat> yes uh, what is, would be the next one is general magic general magic is something everything well everything that doesn't fit yeah. into the other categories and yeah. and in earlier days uh, at least in germany we had two different categories to compete in one would be um, uh, general magic with talking Mm -hmm. uh, so that you would be able to communicate with the audience uh, by talking with them. And the other category would be just magic with music. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like Okito uh, and so on and so on. And uh, nowadays um, some acts, well, they work better internationally if they can only use uh, music and don't have to uh, talk because otherwise you get stuck with translations, etc. That certainly, and now <clears throat> to uh, for the for the competitions or for the uh, world championship as well, they melted it together into one category. And, that's it. and so, just keep in mind all the other categories we are talking about. When you don't find whatever is in there, it's general, general magic. magic. <laughs> very very easy, very easy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah, all the system. Now here's the big illusions. one, and that yeah. is definitely that that was. I mean, big illusions is for. Big players like David Copperfield. Las Vegas is full of them. Yes. Uh, but uh, I think other places also. Yeah. Hans Klock. Uh, we have uh, Siegfried and Roy who established all this at the beginning. Uh, they, they, they placed, well, they, they started the whole Chris, movement. Chris, of the, Chris Angel. Yeah. Now Chris Angel solo, uh, uh, certainly polarizes. Um, magicians at least. Uh, you might like or don't like what he's doing. Um, and there's also, there's not only community, there's also some competition going on. But I have to say the last show that I have seen of That's him, amazing. Uh, I went there twice and it was a nice recommendation um, of a friend of Chris who said, no, you have to see the show. He changed so much and it was an amazing good show. 
um, and I'm so happy to be able to um, have seen Panatella live in their, in their theater in Las Vegas and Copperfield and Chris Angel and uh, Matt King that oh. is also a different league yes but oh. he's not doing big illusions he's yeah, yeah. But, but all these kinds of, of, of magic is awesome. Now, with, with illusions... In Germany, we have the, uh, the Ehrlich brothers. Yeah, very famous now. Um, very famous they, now, they, yeah. they were, yeah, it's great marketing as well. So yeah. they, they are really well known now in the public, they're... like Copperfield back then, as and Cyprian Roy. They are, th they are singing now, yeah? You know this? They are singing. They have oh, my a, God. They have a, um, an LP, is an LP? CD? Uh, CD? Oh, my God, yeah. yeah an an, an album? Yeah, yeah. What they, shall I say? Um, it's crazy because the uh, the piano is uh, not like a normal piano. It's round and he's standing in the middle and play because they are musicians also. Are they? Are they yeah, musicians? yeah. Okay. And he, is, he has a guitar and there comes big fire out, 20 meters of flames and then they th then they're singing, okay. Singing part is it's not my but, uh, but the show, the but the show is super cool. So yeah, yeah. okay. On big okay. illusions, they're walking on a on a on a on a wall, and it's cool. Okay, I have not seen their show yet. Uh, something that I have to do in the magic show. I'm not a big fan of illusions. I'm more a fan of magic close by. Yeah, uh, where it's right down in front of my eyes. And that's why we come to the next part. Yes. So far, we only gave you um, comedy. So far, we only spoke about uh, uh, um, areas, uh, categories for the stage for larger audiences, and and comedy is still one of the bigger uh, categories as well. Now, with comedy magic, uh, we have these two areas of being funny and doing magic, and there are certain uh, certainly extremes in both directions. It could either be extremely funny and not at all magical doing using magic and, and and destroying magic or giving away the magic secrets whatsoever and then then that is really the difficult part if you can do really strong magic effects and be funny at the same time that is the highest class you can do mecking mecking is one of those uh david williamson no, david williamson <laughs> piff and the if you have, the magic and really. if you have recently seen uh, uh fool us of uh, uh and have seen the performance of uh, uh mario lopez from spain <sighs> then then you understand what it means to be very funny and do great co uh, uh, and great magic that is unexplicable like also uh, back then fred cups where, where magic was happening to him where not he was the one who is doing the magic, but where magic yeah. is, is suddenly Excellent. happening, Excellent. like the like the salt in his hand or the homing card, very famous item that you can also get from us. It's a variation of red cups or the original routine, where you show seemingly five red cards and the black queen shows up over and over and over again, uh, destroying your performance. What is, if you if you if you search for Fred cups homing card on YouTube. You will uh, find it's a find very it. funny presentation. Yeah, yes, so there you cool. see a professional working. Yeah, um, yeah, and that's comedy magic. Um, let's go to the next yeah, one. Yeah, let's cool. Do. Boom. Mentalism. mentalism. Yeah, mentalism. Mental magic is kind of um, well. I love. I, I like mentalism when it's well done. Tricks with the brain. Yeah, but uh, well, if you see mentalism at magic conventions, usually they are boring like hell. And I have seen a lot of mentalists who are boring like hell. But I have, when I have my gigs and I start with some close-up magic with cards and then I, I go to the mental part, it's so, Certainly, so yes. stronger, it's so stronger because, yeah. As long as, as you are making clear that this is uh, still magic, it's all good. But uh, I mean, uh, when, you, when you watch Darren Brown performing, it's it's awesome yeah. and, and it, but but this is not boring this is the thing it is not boring you just wonder how this on hell could uh, be possible is, i i think he's yeah. the best yes so um yeah. so certainly if you strive to uh, be entertaining and not just uh, i can read your brain then mentalism can be extremely strong it's a category where i have seen Oh my God! Uh, very, very, very funny performance. The funniest I've ever seen was from an Argentinian guy. Now we are friends, but back then in 2015 at the uh, FISM World Championship in Blackpool, he performed, and at that time his English was not so good. Okay. Exactly. That's how it, what he was called. Okay, Larry. So every sentence he did was so. Says, this is this. Okay. This is this. Okay. 
So he always ended every sentence with okay. Like me? Like you. Not Sorry. Really. Yes. No. And, and so in the middle of the act, while he tried to be as serious as possible, the audience started picking it up. And it was like being in a bullfight in Spain where the torero would pull the, 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 the red uh, sleeve, the, the red um, piece of uh, fabric, piece, uh, uh, pull it away and the audience would say, okay, no ole, pero, but, but okay. And, and so he was in the middle of a performance, had people on stage, try to do a mentalism act, etc. And every time when he said, okay, the whole audience <laughs> joined in, okay. So it, it ended up being extremely funny. He certainly didn't get anything. He was very pissed, but he went, went famous. He is now okay, Larry. <laughs> He's okay, Larry. He, he lives now with this. And, and um, certainly he went back to, uh, to the next FISM and he got way more serious. He improved his English. But in 2015, he really struggled. And, and I can tell you that after that, we went, uh, it was a whole week, right? Uh, the, the FISM World Championship. So part of this, um, this whole experience in Blackpool was that we also went to the circus that is there, very old theater at the, at the tower of uh, Blackpool. And in there, we saw a great show with comedians, with, uh, with, with uh, yeah, um, yeah, great comedians, just a, a show with them. And somehow one of them started saying, okay, you can imagine what the audience started. Okay. Okay. So he, he, was, he, he stopped immediately and, and looked into the audience, was totally frightened what was going on there. And he immediately understood. He was such a professional that he played with the audience and the whole experience went nuts because he was using it over and over and over again. That, that's when you see a professional working. He immediately caught, uh, oh, something is going on here. I don't know what it is, but I got it. And he's playing with the audience. He's not uh, going against it. He just takes it and puts it into his act. That was total professional and was one of the best performances I've seen by a comedian or yeah, a clown. It was awesome. This, this show was spectacular. But Okay, we were at mentalism. Let's go to the next category. Magic for kids. <laughs> Our favorite category. Short okay. Give me a second. Yeah. Um, so I will continue uh, alone here. That's fine. Uh, he got an emergency call. Uh, sorry for this. Um, magic for kids. It's not that easy. It's not his favorite topic. It's not that. That's <laughs> why he left now. Um, I, perf I started with uh, Kids Magic when I started my magic career back in 2004 uh, and uh, had a great book to learn from, um, Magic for, uh, for Kids by a German, uh, two German magicians who are professional um, magicians for kids. Uh, I did one act uh, and that was really a great experience but also very difficult. So uh, if you should be aware that a good kids magician is one of the toughest jobs you can do. I can also recommend anything of uh, Silly Billy. Uh, he has great books because um, when he performs uh, in New York, in New York State, uh, he says this is the toughest crowd you can get. These kids are grown up uh, being very tough and rigid so you have to be tough uh, with the kids as well you know certainly in a way that they enjoy the whole performance and he's a master in doing all this and it's awesome seeing him working so it's not my topic definitely not um, and I will never be a good kids entertainer definitely not now the next one would be parlor magic and that's now we are getting closer to a smaller uh, uh, audience, uh, the bigger the, the rest of the categories you can play for hundreds of people with parlor magic um, coming from uh, Salon Magie. Uh, it is when the busking went into the upper class levels um, with uh, Robert Udin or uh, Hofzinser in Austria when it was established going away from the uh, uh, fairs and uh, the markets to the um, salons of the upper class uh, elite and uh, certainly parlor magic is done for let's say a group of 100 people that's a good uh, audience that you can manage and you have to be aware that you're, you're already close by you can uh, interact much more intimate 
uh, but you are still working in this frame up here where you are, uh, well, chamber magic is also a category. Well, it's not a category, uh, chamber magic uh, was established by uh, the New York magician um, and, and uh, Steve Cohen. And uh, this is the typical form of parlor magic, very elegant. And uh, Mark Weider, a friend of ours, he is the um, uh, top, uh, well, uh, right now the um, FISM winner, the world champion in uh, parlor magic. And he was using our parlor cards that are slightly bigger and much bigger index so that you would easily see whatever is going on even for a larger audience. His act was awesome because everything he did to the playing card, like tearing it off, putting a flame on it, etc., happened with a card on his shirt as well. So, torn off uh, corner, restoring the corner, it all happened on the shirt as well. Really cool. And uh, let's see if we um, sooner or later have this act in our repertoire here as well. Now, the next category would be uh, the card magic, and that's certainly the biggest topic of all categories that we have because 80% of all tricks that exist are using a deck of cards. So if you are doing any, I, I'm 100% sure if you are one magician watching this, uh, you might right now have a deck of cards in your hand playing with it and doing your shuffles and training your sleight of hand, what is absolutely okay. Now, um, I cannot interact with you right now uh, because uh, Philo took his phone with him. Uh, so I don't see any comments right now. So sorry if I cannot interact with you right now. So I'm continuing here with um, the uh, with playing cards. Most of tricks are done. And certainly you have to be aware that uh, you can also um, yeah, lose the interest in, with your audience. Uh, that that if you are doing card trick after card trick after card trick, you uh, they, they might lose interest. So uh, be aware that you should have other items and other props that you should also use uh, in a mix, in a nice mix. And therefore we have another category that fits in there that also uses the cards. It's close up. Uh, Micro Magic was another name for it as well, where you would have small little props like, like a, a, a certain stick with gems on it or coins and so so the whole category it's just close-up magic um, and it's great uh, coins uh, bills uh, matches match boxes all little tiny pieces are awesome for this and you certainly uh, can do uh, anything like this in in bar magic or restaurant magic so if you ever have seen any material of doc eason uh, doing his bar magic behind the bar it's awesome um, and uh, the, his anniversary walls for instance a total classic card on ceiling totally classic and so on and so on so you should um, really have if you are if you are liking close-up you should have a nice mix maybe sponge balls is also a very good classic that you always uh, should have with you even if you might not like it I don't know um, so uh, the next one and the last one and Philo is just joining us right in time for it. It's camera magic and camera magic is very, um, very uh, a, a big topic. It could be anything uh, that is uh, using a camera. It would be Zoom, it would be YouTube, it would be uh, on the stage, old TV on series. Or on stage with camera. Yeah, for oh my God, uh, back then Sean Falk, well, when he did uh, Shape, Shape of My Heart, uh, to the music it was where his wife was putting a camera right in front of him just on his hand and doing uh, the whole magic while he was sitting on a bar stool um, on a stage but everybody was watching it on on the camera that was yeah you're right absolutely now uh, with uh, the camera magic you can interact in a different way and unfortunately this category un until today does not exist in 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 the championships and the competitions as I would say, um, too much is put into, into close-up magic. For instance, if you see a magician performing like Jan Logemann, who is a great card, menu, uh, card artist and does close-up magic just with a deck of cards and some other props. Um, and then you have a Shin Lim who also competed in this category, but doing something totally different with, uh, with magic for the camera. I don't want to give away too much but doing magic 
for the camera while audience members were standing next to him um, something happened on the table that they would see seemingly not because the audience should believe that he did magic close up but actually he was performing for the for camera the cameras, yeah. and so the camera setting was uh, specially done it wasn't camera uh, trick meaning that the camera would cut something out or that would be something filtered out or eliminated afterwards no you're performing magic for the camera knowing the uh, the advantages when interacting with one focal point and with one audience member because right now I'm looking into your eyes into everybody's eyes who is watching this video right now because I'm looking into the camera lens. Yeah, <laughs> that is, that's a super cool idea. Yeah, yeah well actually what I do, <laughs> what I do here is, should I, should I go to the front and show it? Because we have a monitor uh, above it and you know it when you are uh, going on a Zoom call or whatsoever, you are always watching... Uh, well, I can't show it like... Well, uh, I just lift it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I will just yeah, lift it up. Yeah. So what I have here is a teleprompter as well. Uh, above is our um, screen, our monitor to see what we are doing. But at the beginning, I was always distracted by looking up what is going on on the screen. What made me look up to this area and I would now not look into your eyes, what is totally distracting. So my idea was uh, we are not using the teleprompter very often. But I can I do a picture and then I can show it. Uh, okay, much, much yeah, do easier, it. Much easier. Yeah, okay. Do, he does a photo and then uh, that's our teleprompter. <laughs> now, and then? Yeah, and now, yeah. <laughs> and this is what we do. Actually, so what, what we have here is uh, I, I used a printout of a woman and I'm just using this one here <laughs> where the view of the teleprompter is. So I can uh, directly look into the eyes of this lady. I don't know her. I just found a, a, a face on the internet. Uh, and she's very attractive and draws my attention so that I can look right into her eyes, into your eyes. So um, if you are seeing this and, and, if, and, and it's and you, has, please, please call us. She <laughs> has be good, good eyes. <laughs> yes. So uh, one more time with the camera lens, we can now play because we don't have any bad angles. If you have tricks like uh, there are several tricks released that are only possible in front of a camera, then it's fine as long as this category would exist but you're not able to do it anywhere else with an audience standing around with five people around, it's impossible. So you have to be aware of your angles, if you can perform it or not. And if you just have one, let's say an eye candy that you want to put into your promo videos or you are preparing your show for the Zoom call whatsoever, why not? It's just a different category. Absolutely. Right? So um, I think we, are, we, we covered all of these categories. I hope you liked our stream so far. Sorry that uh, I was here alone for a few minutes. Uh, you were hopefully not too much bored. <laughs> um, if you like this, please ring uh, the bell. Yes, uh, share, share this, uh, this video with your friends. Uh, let yeah. others know, please uh, subscribe to the channel so that we uh, can, uh, that you would help us with, our, with the YouTube algorithm. Yeah. Click the bell as well. And we're coming up with new things. We have a lot of ideas and yes. yeah. It, please even leave a comment here and, and uh, we, we are reading every comment. We are responding to every comment. And uh, if you have an idea of a topic that we should cover, you might see in our channel, we have other videos like how to prepare your own stripper deck, uh, the best mark decks that exist and so on and so on. You will find all these topics. And uh, so I hope that you will uh, uh, yeah, recommend our videos to your friends and I hope to see you next Monday again next Monday because every time on Monday at 8 o'clock p.m. German time we are going live with a stream so I hope we'll see you there next time and until then bye bye have a great evening bye bye now I have to go to the